Welcome back, everyone. Today we are talking about deflections of beams and frames calculated using the principle of virtual work, which is also known as the unit load method. To get started, let's do a recap on the principle of virtual work. So this principle states that the total work done by a set of forces in equilibrium on any kinematically admissible displacements is equal to zero. So the core idea is that we'll have two separate systems that I'll be analyzing. I'll have the real system here, which is the real structure with the real loads applied, and we'll calculate the displacement at some given location. We'll call that delta R. And I don't know what that displacement it is, but I can calculate my strains throughout that structure, and we'll call that epsilon R. Second, I'll be considering a virtual system. This will be my set of forces in equilibrium. I'm going to place a force of unit one located at the location and in the direction of the displacement I want to calculate. Now for this system, I can calculate the stresses throughout the entire volume. And now I can combine these two systems. I can calculate the work using the forces and stresses from my virtual system and my displacements and strains from my real system to come up with the principle of virtual work expression for delta R, which is the integral over the entire volume of the stresses in the virtual system multiplied by the strains in the real system. Now we've seen how to apply this for trusses. Let's expand that concept to beams and frames. Now the main difference for beams and frames is that we're going to have three different internal forces and each of those could contribute to my displacements at least in theory. So we'll have axial term, we'll have a shear term, and we'll have a moment term. So if we add all these together, we'll have, starting with the axial term, an integral from zero to L of Ni and R divided by E A D X, where E is our elastic modulus, A is a cross-sectional area, and Ni and R are the internal forces for the axial force for my virtual system or for my real system. Similarly, we can do this for shear. So for shear, I'm also going to integrate from zero to L, and I'm going to have VI VR divided by GA, where G is the shear modulus. And then I'm going to multiply this by some cross-sectional factor kappa, which tells me how the shear stresses are distributed through my section, and then integrating over DX. Finally, we have the moment term, and that's integral from zero to L of MI MR divided by EI, where the new term here, I, is the moment of inertia of our section, integrated over dx. Now, in theory, all three of these contri can contribute to my displacements, but in practice, the moment one is by far the most important term for pretty much any civil engineering structure and any beam type structure. The axial force term and the shear force term are minor contributions and will sometimes consider axial force Shear force can be important for deep beams, but most of the time, just the moment alone will give a very good approximation of the total displacement. Now, in the example that we'll do today, I will also calculate the displacements due to the axial force term, just to show that it is, in fact, negligible in most circumstances. So now that we've got the theory down, let's dive into an example problem. So here I have a simple two-member frame, it has a column AB and a beam BC. All of them have the same cross-sectional properties. Here I have a concentrated load of 20 kilonewtons down, and I'm interested in calculating my vertical displacement here at C. So for the virtual system for this problem, I'm going to be considering a unit load down at location C. And again, we have properties here for cross-section and moment of inertia. And we also have a Young's modulus in terms of gigapascals. If I want to convert that to kilonewtons per meter squared, this would be equal to 30 times 10 to the sixth kilonewtons per meter squared. So we'll start with calculating the real system. The first thing that we'll do is calculate our reaction forces. So I'll see that I need a 20 kilonewton force up at location A. Sum of moments about A will give me a reaction force at C in the horizontal direction, and we'll find that's eight kilonewtons. And then sum of forces in the x direction means that this is also eight kilonewtons. Now, if we go to the axial force throughout the frame, the column is in compression of negative 20, and then the beam is going to be in compression of negative eight. For shear, this column has a shear of negative eight, and the beam is going to have a shear of 20, 
but then it drops down to zero once I apply that concentrated load. So this has a magnitude 20. And for my moment, I have two lines. So I have a first line segment, and that's going to be eight multiplied by the distance of four meters. So that goes to negative 32 kilonewton meters. So I'm gonna start at negative 32 over in the beam, and it rapidly goes to zero, and then it's zero for the remainder of that segment. Now when applying the principle of virtual work, it's useful to have equations for each of your diagrams. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say for my moment diagram, I have X1 for my column and an X2 for the coordinate of my beam. And I'm going to find the equations for these. So for this line, it's going to be negative eight times X1. The negative eight is coming from the shear diagram. So we just integrate shear to get to moment. So negative eight becomes negative eight times X. And similarly for this segment in the beam, it's going to be a positive 20. And then I need to subtract 32 to make sure that it is has the correct intercept right here at x2 is equal to zero. Now, moving on to the virtual system, my unit load down is going to be countered by a load of one up at point A, taking my sum of moments about point A will give me a force of 0 0.8 acting to the left, and so therefore I'll have a 0 0.8 acting to the right at point A. Now all these forces actually are unit lists, so we're not gonna have a unit for any of these quantities, except for the moment, which is going to have a unit of blank, no load, times meters. So if I do a similar idea of getting my axial shear and moment diagrams for the virtual system, axial is going to be a compression of minus one here in the column, and minus 0 0.8 in the beam, for the shear, I have a minus 0 0.8 in the column, and then I'm going to have a positive one in that beam. And for the moment, I'm going to have two lines. So line here and a line here for that beam. The moment here at the corner is negative 3.2, taking the area under my shear diagram. And once again, I can find the expressions for those two lines. So in the column, it is negative 0 0.8 times x1. And in this beam, it's going to be x minus 3.2. So now that we have our structural analyses for axial shear and moment, let's apply the principle of virtual work. So I'll start off with my axial strain energy term. Again, we're going to find this is relatively negligible, but let's go through the whole exercise of computing that. So my integral expression here from zero to L, I'm really integrating over the whole structure. So I'm going to break this into two components. So I'm going to have an integral from A to B for my column and for B to C for that beam. So let's break this down. If I'm looking from A to B for the column, that varies from zero to four meters. And then NI in that region is a negative one and NR in that region is negative 20 kilonewtons. And it's going to be divided by EA dx. Plus I'll have a second expression from 0 to 3.2. So this is for my beam. My ni is negative 0 0.8 and my nr is negative 8 kilonewtons divided by ea dx. Now if I evaluate those integral terms, we'll find that this is equal to a 100.48 kilonewton meters divided by EA. So now we can substitute in our values for EA. So this is 100.48 kilonewton meters divided by E, which is 30 times 10 to the sixth kilonewtons per meter squared. And then my cross-sectional area is 0 0.09 meters squared. So I can see unit wise, I'm going to be left with just a meter. So because I prefer this in millimeters, I'm going to multiply my result by 1000 millimeters per meter. And we'll find that this displacement is equal to 0 0.0372 millimeters. So again, a very small displacement for the axial term alone. Now let's compare that to the moment. Once again, I'm going to break my integral up into two segments where I'm going to look at the column from A to B. But for the beam, I'm only going to look at this first 1.6 meters because my moment in the second region is equal to zero. So obviously that integral in that region will also be equal to zero. So if I define my displacement due to the moment contribution, 
will first integrate from zero to four for my column. MI is negative 0.8 X1. And then MR is negative eight times X1 divided by EI, and I'm integrating over X1. My second contribution will be from zero to 1.6, where MI is going to be X2 minus 3.2. And then MR is 20 times X2 minus 32, again, divided by EI dx 2 Now we can go ahead and evaluate these integrals. Skipping the tedious calculus part, we'll find that this is 204.8 kilonewton meters cubed divided by EA. So let's talk a little bit about where that unit of kilonewton meters cubed came from. So my MR, my real moments are going to be kilonewton meters, and my MI for the virtual system is just meters. Furthermore, we'll have a unit for my length of meters. So we'll see that we have meter, meter, and kilonewton meter. So that's kilonewton meters cubed, and then divide by EI. So now I can go ahead and plug in my values for EI. So this is going to be 204.8, kilonewton meters cubed divided by E, which is 30 times 10 to the sixth kilonewtons per meter squared, multiplied by I, which is 6.75 times 10 to the negative fourth meters to the fourth. And once again, we see that our units all cancel out, kilonewtons cancels, I'll have all that's left is a meter. And so I'm going to multiply this by 1000 millimeters per meter to make sure that the units are in millimeters. And my result is going to be 10.11 millimeters. So again, that is substantially larger than my axial force contribution, hence why axial force is often ignored in design. However, if we want to consider the combination of these two, we would just add them together. So I can take 10.11 millimeters plus my fraction of a millimeter that I got beforehand, and I'd see in total, I would have 10.15 millimeters. Now that displacement is going to be acting down at location C. And the reason I know it's down at that location is because I've computed my total displacement to be a positive number and my unit load was applied down at that location. So if we find a positive displacement, that means that displacement is in the same direction as my unit load that I placed on the structure. So that wraps up principle of virtual work for beams and frames. I hope you learned something. Please subscribe and I will see you next time.